Well, Andy Burnham joins me now from Salford. Um, in over 100 years, your party's never elected a woman. All your rivals are women. What message will it send if you elect another middle-aged man? Well, Labour's got to choose the person best placed to take the party forward from what you just heard was a very difficult defeat. We've got to be able to get people back uh, in Scotland, in the north, in Wales, in London and the south, somebody with reach all over the country, and I believe I'm the best person to do that. Well, can you tell me one of your changes that appeals both to people who deserted you for the SNP in Scotland, people who deserted you for the UKIPs, in the north of England and those Ernst & Young tax experts you were talking to today in London? I think what unites all of those people is that they've lost an emotional connection with the Labour Party. People who went to the SNP in Scotland, people who voted for UKIP in the north, the Midlands and the south, uh, and those who, who stopped, went with the Tories because they saw them as a, a better bet. And that is... Seriously, you think how, it was an emotional honest, connection? That's why people yeah, didn't vote they've Labour. looked at the Labour Party in recent times and they haven't seen a party which looks like them, sounds like them, looks like they, they understand what their lives are like. And I've said, I think at times we've appeared like a metropolitan elite that doesn't really understand their concerns about immigration or the changes that they see in their communities. Well, you did and, today and standing that's up got in the to city. change, hasn't it? That's really got to change if Labour is to win those people back. And, you know, in this leadership election, there's no point in us skirting round the difficult issues. The whole point now for Labour is to go straight to those issues. OK. And and address them directly. And that is what I'm doing in this leadership campaign. Then let's address directly just a few key touchstone issues. Do you support the rail strike next week? I, I haven't looked at the details, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I've, not, I've not looked at where the negotiations are up to. Uh, I know the strike was called off this week. Let, let's see how the issue develops. Okay. But I, I wouldn't be in a position tonight to say to you that, Christian. What about the Tata steel strike that's been called today? Oh, I'm not, I'm, hang on a minute. You know, called today. I'm afraid I've not been kind of spending all day looking at all of those details. I mean, I, I support uh, trade unions. I support working people being able to defend uh, their rights, their terms and conditions. I don't back away uh, from those uh, things. I've said in this campaign that I won't accept union donations uh, to my campaign. But you know, campaign, but you know why I'm doing that? I'm doing that so that I'll be in a stronger position to defend the historic link between the Labour Party and the trade okay. unions coming out. If I've not benefited personally from that link in this campaign, I believe I will be a stronger voice to defend what, in my view, is the cleanest money in politics, and those are the donations of working people to support the People's Party, the Labour Party. You said you'll ditch the mansion tax. What about the 50% tax? Will you ditch that? No, I think it's right. I think it's right when the country is facing very difficult times that people who can and people who have the most should contribute the most. I think it was a big mistake uh, of David Cameron and George Osborne uh, to give that tax cut uh, to millionaires okay. at the same time as they were imposing the bedroom tax That's clear. on thousands of vulnerable people in my constituency. So, no, I wouldn't uh, d d defend you, you would bring uh, it back. the drop in tax yeah. to 45%. 50%, 50 pence uh, in the pound is right at this time. OK, you said Labour was wrong to run a deficit in the mid-2000s that you overspent effectively. What should you have done instead? Should you have cut spending or raised taxes? Well, there is a number of ways, aren't there, to bring uh, the deficit down. If you, and you have to go back to how the economy uh, was performing at that time. Yeah, which we, of those come, two things? Hang on a second, let me answer your question. Uh, the economy had been growing strongly uh, in, that, uh, in that period. So I am quite clear, we should have done more uh, to bring the deficit down from a, from a range of measures, public spending being one, uh, but of course growth in the economy enabling you to, uh, to bring in uh, higher tax so revenue So you would have too. cut spending? No, I, I'm telling you that we would have brought the deficit down from a range of, a range of well, ways. Well, we, how? we invested in schools and hospitals in the early part of the last decade. But I was Chief Secretary to the Treasury in 2007, and I did a spending review that grew public spending lower than overall growth in the economy. And that was the right thing to do at that time, but it was too yeah. late, Christian, because already we were, we were getting close to the point where the economy... Uh, crashed and we weren't in a strong enough position uh, to, to face right. uh, the pressures that came. So we were doing it, but the point I'm making to you is we, we, uh, we, we brought back spending too late Going and we forward, should have done it earlier. You've now said you will support some cuts in welfare and you may support the welfare cap coming down to £23,000, correct? 
Uh, what I've said is we can't set our face against changes uh, to, to the welfare budget. That's not something that would be right for us to do at this time. But no, I don't say that we just make indiscriminate changes no, I didn't and, leave, and leave vulnerable people uh, exposed. I, I, I'm very clear about that. So we will look at what the government brings uh, forward. You know, they, they have introduced uh, this benefits cap, but alongside it have put in discretionary uh, housing support. So the question is, are they still going to support people who may face uh, face changes uh, to their benefits, particularly uh, vulnerable families and, and children? So we'll look at the details very carefully indeed. So, so Andy Burnham, so far today you've said you'd scrap the mansion tax, you'd consider some welfare cuts. We know you want to tackle immigration. You've changed your position on the EU referendum and you now love wealth creators. Why don't you just join the Conservative Party? We've just come through a very difficult uh, election defeat. So now is the time to identify all of the difficult issues that Labour has to have a debate about. And if you're saying to me that Labour should just ignore spending and ec economic competence, should just ignore immigration as an issue, should just ignore welfare, should just ignore our relationship with business, well, I put it back to you that the Labour Party won't put itself in a position to win in 2020. You, people know who I am. I'm Labour through and through. I believe in everybody being supported to get on in life. That is who I am. That's what I am all uh, about. I will oppose some of the divisive measures uh, of, this, of this government. I will oppose uh, some of their cuts to benefits that leave people in poverty. I will oppose privatisation uh, of the NHS. Nothing about me is Conservative, nothing at all. Andy I'm Labour, I'm proud of it, but Labour needs to change to win in 2020. Thank you very much for joining us tonight.